this dog. What are you doing? Is that another one? Unbelievable. All right, well, we are done setting fires. We have moved to inside the barn. Um, fires are all going pretty good. Looks like weather's gonna clear off and hold. So we're moved inside the barn, what are we doing? So right now, um, we have the cedar all up on sawhorses, getting ready to stain. He's cleaning it all off right now. Um, and we are prepping for that. So. Just wanted to show you what we're doing first. We're cleaning it all. It's been outside for a while. It looks like crap. So cleaning it up, getting ready for stain, and I'll bring you back when we start staining. All right, so while he's over there cleaning up all of the cedar, I am getting the stain ready. And uh, the stain has set for a couple of weeks since uh, my parents were here. They bought the stain. Mom picked the color out. And uh, we're going to do a little test sample to see and, and texture a picture of it to see if hopefully it's what she likes because she bought two gallons of it. And uh, then we're going to get this done. We've got to get it done because the Jays are coming tomorrow to hang at least half of it, if not more. So, um, yeah, I need to get uh, going on this. And any of you have not or who have ever stained anything, especially with a stain bucket that's set a while, be sure to uh, shake it very, very well. And then beyond that, you actually need to scrape the bottom. Um, so I'm not doing that just to stir it. You gotta scrape all the sediment up off of the bottom as well. Otherwise, the color won't be true because that sediment holds a majority of what actually makes the color of the stain. So be sure to not only do that, I learned that lesson the hard way. Uh, the second house I ever built, uh, several years ago was in Stillwater and uh, did some cabinets, did the entire cabinets out of a stain and then we did a Formica top with a wood edge band and I personally added the edge band towards the end whenever we hardwared so I went back and added the edge band and then I just thought you know what I don't need my painter to do this and then hit me with a change order for it I'll just do it myself so broke out the stain, stained it, long story short I did not shake the can or I did shake the can, but I did not scrape the bottom. And it drastically affected the color. I ended up having to pull it all off, redo it, and uh, restain it the way it should have been done the first time. It was a little bit humiliating because the customer saw it, but uh, got it fixed, made it right. Just one of those things you learn along the way. So scrape the bottom of your stain. All right, so the intern, <laughs> the intern is moving right along with staining. He's got his first one stained, stained, unstained, stained, unstained, stained, unstained. We're not using the uh, best applicator for this situation, but it's what we've got up here and I don't want to go to the store. So uh, we're using a roller with uh, a cotton roller, but if we keep it saturated enough, it's doing what it needs to do. This is a semi-transparent stain, so... And with rough cedar, there really is no wiping. It's really just kind of get it on there. It's so porous, it just kind of soaks up the stain before you could ever even wipe it off anyways. So I uh, hit that right there, that top edge. So he's working away on that. I'm gonna bring the tractor around to the front opening because the tractor has all of the uh, OSB plywood on it that we are going to sheathe that wall with all the way down top to bottom so i'll get into more of that once i get the plywood over here and we get going on it and duke leave the turtle alone no every day we every time we come out, quit every time we come out here he goes to the woods and we don't see him until he finds a turtle last time you saw him with the turtle we were on the back of the truck and he just jolts out of nowhere and jumping at the truck with a turtle in his mouth. Yeah. So 
especially the last he came up yesterday with a turtle he came up last weekend with a turtle he's into turtles what's going to end up happening is the turtle is going to get mad come out of its shell and bite what's rest of what's left of his tongue off so he needs to quit it anyways let's do some plywood sheathing Is that another one? Is that another turtle? Drop it. Drop. What are you doing? What are you doing? Sit. Quit taking turtles. They would appreciate it greatly if you would leave them alone. Back to the future. No, really, uh, we've got to get some gravel down. Uh, I just swept this out last week. And now it's dirty again. Need gravel. Right now. This dog. Turtle number one. Still alive. Just terrified to come out of its shell. Where is this one? Maybe that maybe that one he's got is just this one again. Maybe. Yeah, it must be. Turtle number two. Unbelievable. We'll see if he finds another one. Okay, here we go. We are getting ready to start this wall. Just a couple of quick things before I start this wall. Here's the OSB that we're using for that. Got to cut the banding off and get ready. We're going to put the slick side out. There's two sides to OSB. There's a slick side and a rough side. I'm going to put the slick side out. Um, and then we are also going to lay the first piece vertically. And typically we would start at the bottom and work our way up and I still might because it'll make it easier to rest it on but I got to measure from bottom to top to know what my hold off needs to be I clearly don't want to hold off any more than an inch and a half with a height of a two by four flat on the ground so I want to get it down there as close as possible but I also only have 12 feet so, so the idea is to lay one vertically and then the bottom course horizontally. Of course, I want to do the horizontal part like I just mentioned, 
but I need to know what my holdoffs are because I need to know I need I need my material to span from top to bottom all the way. So I need to measure that. So hopefully I think this is 12 feet one and a half, which means I probably won't be able to go all the way up to the bottom of the uh, floor trusses, the floor joists, the eye joists up there. I'll probably end up having to hold off an inch and a half, but that will be fine because we still have material there to seal it. So let me get a tape measure out and I'll figure all that out and I won't come back to explain to you. You'll just end up knowing what I ended up having to do after that. The only other thing I wanted to talk about was this right here. This is 12 foot material and this material is not considered like A grade. It's, it's number two material. Um, so with some of that, you're gonna have some of these uh, bark edges and things like that whenever we lay this OSB what we're what our goal is is to split a two by four and so in some instances when I split like for instance if this one happens to be one we split you can see that the bark is missing off of a majority of that so we may end up having to put a block on the side of some of these to catch it for not only that reason but for the fact that they're 12 feet and they could be 12 feet doing this or this or whatever they're walking all over the place this is a good example uh, from top to bottom here, this thing's probably over an inch, maybe an inch and a half. You can see how much I'm flexing it there. Uh, this one's real bad. You can see here, I'm able to move that a lot to get it back to straight. I mean, that's about straight right there. And that's probably three inches of movement. So I'm gonna have to cut a block for some of these to remedy that. What, we, what I'll do is I'll cut like uh, 16 inches on center minus an inch and a half. So that'll be four, I'll end up cutting a 14 and a half inch block and putting it at the worst spot of that bow. And that'll push that whole two by four over back to where we need it. So just some little tips and tricks. If you happen to be ever doing something like that on a wall where you've got some bowed material, you can cut a block and move it over to where you need it. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna get after it. I'm gonna measure it, I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna get ready. And uh, as you know, this is 16 inches on center. Well, you don't know that, now you know that. These are 16 inches on center. Uh, the exterior walls are two foot on center, but since this is holding weight, we put these on 16. Um, all of your material, quit saying um, all of your material is basically based off of that principle, all your sheet goods. 16 inches on center works great for four foot and works great for eight foot. So with a four by eight piece of material, we shouldn't have to rip anything for it to break perfectly on the studs to make it fast and efficient so we can just go. So we're gonna get the majority of this done today. I don't know how far we'll get going up these stairs, but we'll get pretty far and uh, we'll go from there. So let me get this going. This could be the moment we've been waiting for The chance to feel alive Nothing's gonna stop us Nothing's gonna talk There's nothing like we've ever seen Okay, so I wanted to stop it real quick, show you what I was doing. I'm getting ready to cut out the that one, and that one are for the light switches for uh, the stairs and for coming into the shop. And you can see I've already cut my sides, and now I have to cut my back. Well, I have made sure that I ran the saw all the way to, I put the saw in the deepest settings. The easiest thing to do would just be to plunge the saw in from this side, just right on that line and cut it out but it would look like crap because my cut from the blade would go that way and that way just to go deep enough to cut that out and this isn't going to be the final product on the wall but it is going to be for a little bit and i don't want it to look like butthole 
So I am going to, the best thing to do if you want to make this cut look professional is go ahead and go all the way to your line just like I did and then I will flip the board over and I will make my plunge cut from the back side and I can get away with going a whole lot deeper with a little bit better tolerance there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm getting ready to flip this over. I've cut my sides to exactly the length. So now all I have to do is match my blade up from the back side with those uh, side cuts and just plunge most of the way, some of the way down through. I still won't be able to go too deep. I still might have to clean the corners up, but uh, it is a whole lot better than just trying to do that from the face. So. This is where it all Well, that's enough uh, burning, snake wrangling, sheathing, staining for Tate the intern and I for one day. So we are going to call it a day. We're hot. I'm completely soaked in sweat. And uh, yeah, so I'm done. Amber, I'm sure, is wondering where I'm at. So it is after almost six o'clock here. So I'm going to get out of here real quick. Let me show you what all we got done just so you don't think we just poured water on ourselves and made something up. So uh, Tate got all of these uh, posts stained on all four sides. He got those two by 12s and all those two by 12s stained on all sides. Um, I got all this sheathing up to that point right there. Uh, now we got probably four sheets left to get to the top of the stairs. And then I did not put this in because the Jays are coming tomorrow to hang those doors. And we got to drop a header down to where it goes. There's a header already up there, but we got to drop the opening down to where it goes. And that uh, sheathing needs to go up and over and up. So I couldn't do that without that framing done yet. I could have, but it just made everybody's life more difficult. So we'll do that tomorrow, but uh, that's it for today. So. Until tomorrow, which who knows that'll be in, when that'll be in your time. But for me, until tomorrow, we'll see you next time up on the ridge. Mm -hmm.